Welcome back to the channel folks and today we're diving back into the world of Hellraiser and specifically Hellraiser Origins. For those that aren't aware, Hellraiser Origins was a two minute pitch trailer designed to get studios excited for a reboot of the franchise. Now this was from the minds of Mike Lehan and Paul Gerrard. Some absolutely incredible artwork from Paul Gerrard, which I will be including in this video. So I have included his website down below in the description box. Please do go check it out because his work is some of the best in the industry. Uh, and some of the best in the industry for this specific type of genre. It really, really is fantastic. So please do go check it out. Now, Hellraiser Origins never came to be. The trailer excited a lot of people. A lot of people were really really into the uh, the trailer for Hellraiser Origins, but it just never happened. And with respect to the story, again, this is something which a lot of people are not aware. It, it sort of disappeared into the ether. Now, I managed to get my hands on the entire pitch for Hellraiser Origins, and I detailed it in a previous video, so I will link that down below in the description box as well, because it is really, really interesting. And for those for those people that are interested in Hellraiser, you you probably would be excited to hear some of this stuff. It won't resonate with everyone, but as a whole, as a reboot, as a concept which is set before absolutely everything that we've known before, it's great. So it doesn't change the law entirely, it just adjusts it ever so slightly from a timeline standpoint. And it's really, really good. I like it from a personal perspective anyway. So today what I wanted to do is break down the characters, just give you what is stated on the character breakdown sheet on the PDF which I have. I will include it in the video itself, so you will read it along with me, and the purpose of this is really just to open up the changes that they had for the soft reboot, and then just give you my opinion of it, but then also get yours. So a bit of an interactive video, I want to hear your thoughts on this, because it is one of those things that you come along to a franchise that is so beloved from at least the first two movies, and you're looking to kind of change it from a timeline perspective, and it will be intriguing to hear your thoughts, because a lot of people are out and out saying, no, I don't like this. But when you take into account that this is set so far in the past, and predates everything that we've seen before. It doesn't really mess anything up. So take that into account as we go through this video. And like I said, please do leave your thoughts down below. So Pinhead himself in this iteration is the High Priest Lord. He is the ancient first incarnation of Pinhead. Now for those that aren't aware, Clive Barker had the intention of the Hell Priest, the High Priest Lord of Hell, to be a mantle. It wasn't going to be you know, specifically one person. It wasn't going to be Elliot Spencer. It is a mantle in hell. So it gets passed down from Cenobite to Cenobite. And this can be seen in the comics of Hellraiser as well. With Zype Totep, I think the name was, for Pinhead. In the Hellraiser comic books from Boom Comics. So that is an established Clive Barker idea. So for those people that will just think that this is something which Paul Gerard and Mike Lehan... Uh, thrown out. It's really not. That is actually an established idea from Clive Barker himself. Now, in respect to this iteration of Pinhead, it states that he is the first incarnation of Pinhead, and he leads the Cenobites to reap a fleshy crop in their harvest search for the seed of Leviathan. Now, I will cast your minds back to the story, which I did in the previous video, which is quite interesting. I think this is a good version of Pinhead. There were some uh, concepts which a lot of people didn't like because Pinhead in this was a family man of sorts, which then led to his downfall and hunting down the Seed of Leviathan being tricked. Now, the Engineer. Now, this is a slight retcon from the movies, but it's also a slight retcon from the book as well, which all of this is based on. If anyone knows anything about Hellraiser, the original Hellraiser movie had the Engineer in it, but it's definitely not the same engineer that we had in the book. So there's nothing really to hate on with respect to this adjustment because there were some liberties taken even by Clive Barker himself for his original movie. Now, the engineer in this is stated to be the slave to Leviathan. It's interesting that the engineer is stated to actually be a female. The engineer here is actually stated to be man's god, but not as we mistakenly thought a universal god. 
She is an earth god. She provides nutrients for and paves the way for the coming of the masters. The earth is alive. The earth is evil. So this creature is definitely nothing that we've seen before. It's the creature which tricks Pinhead into getting the seed of Leviathan and restarting the infernal machine, the mechanism to which the Leviathan actually is. There are also two specific characters within Hell called the Skinned Tribe and then also the Traders. Now from the cell sheet itself, I couldn't actually work out whether these are supposed to be early man or not. I'm hoping to speak to people a little bit more involved in this to figure out exactly who these people were and what their part was to play, whether they would just be background characters and the occupants of Hell. We move into the settings and locations. The citadels were due to be these huge, huge structures, which you can see in the artwork from Paul Gerard. It's absolutely beautiful stuff. The citadels themselves were high temples of the Cenobites, moving meat grinding machines. The sight of the citadels on the horizon, ever moving, sends shivers down the spines of all tribes. Organic tubes are like colons ferrying living waste through it to various torture points. Now if this isn't Hellraiser through and through, I don't know what is. To see moving citadels on the horizon, quite literally just grinding up meat. This is a very akin to Clive Barker's world and very akin to, to some things which Clive Barker himself have established as well. It's fantastic. This is an idea which I personally would have loved to have seen. It really, really is spectacular and especially in the artwork. The artwork itself is really, really superb. Now, interestingly enough, we go into the Leviathan statue, which is also called the Void. Now, from the character breakdown, it states that we are introduced to a sweeping panorama of Neolithic Icelands in the midst of a new chronicled First World War between Mithraic tribes, primitive, ruthless, and brutal missing links to a long lost and forgotten truth. At the foot of a dominant sky scraping fortress spans a great maze chasm known as the Void. In the center, amongst miles of labyrinth chambers, a single living statue. And that is the Leviathan itself, which is a slight deviation to what we've seen if you take into account Hellraiser 2, Hellbound. We see the labyrinth, we see parts of this, and it's it's similar to what we're seeing here, but it's, it's not exactly the same. Again, it's absolutely fantastic. I really, really like this concept of the Leviathan statue not just being this, this moving diamond-like item in the sky and actually being an old god. It really throws back to, and again, coin the phrase, Lovecraft. This really, really is a Lovecraftian feel to it. And it's something which, again, if you're looking at building a backstory to these particular items in Hell, I think this is a good way of doing it. Because although it explains it just a little bit, it still leaves it way, 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 way open for the mystery of the mind to fill in, to fill in the blanks and to give that air of horror. Because again, as of all things, for those that aren't aware or those that have never heard of this before, the most terrifying thing is the, the imagination of the human mind. It's what we don't know, it's what's not explained. But we also need a little bit of tangibility behind a lot of these things for us to go, oh yeah, no, that is quite scary. It's something that the mind can just latch onto a little bit. So I really like this design, this choice, this idea. And that really, to be fair, wraps it up here. There's not an awful lot else to go into. I'll leave some more artwork down below. I really like this idea as a concept. I know a lot of people are not, you know, enthralled by this when I did the story, but I do feel that this, if you're looking at reboots and things like that, this is a good way to do a soft reboot. It doesn't interfere with the original story, which everyone holds so dear, and of course the actors involved, aka Doug Bradley, but it allows you to explore a a new version because it's set so far in the past this is ancient history and you can have a different actor you can have a whole new take on everything it's one of those things which allows you a lot of artistic license and i think is a good way to go because those people who really you know hold the originals near and dear you still have the originals but with respect to this you can then approach it from a completely different perspective in my eyes this is the way to go i really do like this 
So guys, like I said at the start of this video, let's get a bit of interaction in here. I want to hear what you think. Again, taking this all into account that it is set so far in the past, and it doesn't actually negate anything that we have seen already, what do you think of this? What do you think of the character breakdowns? Just adding that little bit more detail to the backstory here. Let me know all your thoughts down below in the comment section. As always, if you are new here, please do hit that subscribe button. Stay up to date on all the world of pop culture and movie news. And if you like this video, give it a like and a share. I've been Mr. Age. Take care.